Is it your job to get her wet or is it her job to come wet? Uh, it's my job to get her wet. Explain, elaborate. So, right, this starts long before you and a female even <laughs> get in the bedroom, you know what I'm saying? Before y'all even meet. Before y'all even meet, number one, I have to get my look together, you know what I'm saying? I have to get my aura together. I have mm -hmm. to have my charisma together. So when she first see me, damn. She should be wet. She getting wet just because she see me. Facts. But she think it's because, she think it's in her mind. Like, it's because of her, but she don't even know. She I'm don't know the work. process. Before. I yeah. knew you was going to be like this. Yeah, but I already knew that. <laughs> so, now on, uh, when we get in the bedroom, right? Even before we get in the bedroom, when I'm talking to her, you know what I'm saying? The things that I'm saying, the pictures I'm painting in her mind, you feel what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You whispering in her left ear. That connects to her right brain. You know what I'm saying? Right brain activity is for the imagination. Fact. So I'm yeah, telling her a lot of fly side. shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you once different. You yeah, yeah. I'm different <laughs> like that. So you know what I'm saying? Once we do get in the bedroom, you know, foreplay is is, is crazy, is man. Yeah, man. I got to, you know. <laughs> I was talking to the little homies and shit. They talking about they don't, they don't kiss. I'm like, man, y'all dudes is crazy, man. Y'all dudes is crazy, man. Like, I, I don't kiss. kiss. Yeah, you gotta suck titties. You gotta do yeah. everything. Kiss it on the neck, do everything. Yeah, the pussy. Like, uh, yeah, you gotta I, do what you do, I got man. Coast, 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 coast. All my niggas, we coast High grade, we smoking. On the highway, we rolling. Rolling, crack and bottle, we toasting. Yeah. Welcome to We Don't Whiskey Fucking Podcast. One of the greatest motherfucking podcasts not, coming not, straight not from. Not one of. D. Nah, I'm trying to respectfully give credit to my other pod brothers and pod sisters out there that's doing their thing too. I I, I, I just want to let y'all know, just because we're great, don't mean you're not great too. Because yes. we only surround ourselves with people who are doing great things. Yes. So if you're chilling with us, that means we appreciate the shit that you're doing, and we think what you're doing is fucking amazing. And if we give you a stamp, it means some shit because we don't just hand out stamps. I'm just letting you know that for now. But I will say, even though all that shit. We're still the greatest motherfucking podcast on the planet. I'm Somebody got to say it. I'm going to talk our shit for us. Somebody <laughs> got to say it. But better yet, we get to talk our shit for somebody else that we have back on the podcast. I'm fucking excited about this one. Anybody who personally know me, anybody who... This fucking artist is one of my favorite artists. Period. Point blank. Not just because he's from CT. Not just because we chill. That's because I feel like he's a brother. But even before that, this artist is one of my favorite artists. I think lyrically, he is one of the dopest to ever bless the mic. And if you ever been graced with any of his music, any of his freestyles, you would concur. And if you don't, what the fuck is you doing, Patrick? You under a rock, my nigga. Yeah. This man has been part of the culture of connecticut for decades yeah mm -hmm. you can't talk about weaver high school talent shows without mentioning this man's name you can't talk about connecticut radio mm -hmm. without mentioning this man's name mm -hmm. damn yo when she looked like hallie treated she like, like whoopee like come on that's <laughs> one of the greatest bars ever <laughs> Ever, yeah. but this man still accelerates past it. Yeah, and then some. And you know the crazy part about it, he still haven't even peaked. Mm. Not even close. You know I can keep going. Yeah, we have fucking smooth hands in the fucking building, man. It's the God, man. Yo, it's her class here. <laughs> oh it's my the God. God, man. Yo, yo, that introduction was. Was beautiful, man. Appreciate that, man. Thank Nigga, you. But I ain't nothing but a fool, man. Don't don't be listening. Nigga, to him, me too. Man. I ain't shit. Man. Me too. I, <laughs> I realize every wise man always acknowledge at some point that they are a fool. Right, right, absolutely. Or we know you're not wise. Yeah, we know nothing. We know some real shit. Because the more you know, nothing. the more you realize you know shit. Absolutely, man. Thank That's you. That's always more to know. That, Go ahead, Quad. Do what you got to do while I smoke, because I just want to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. All right, since you. You kind of answered it earlier, but I just want to kind of get into it with this. Um, you said that you want to be direct to consumer. Your your goal is not to be the major artist, the right. mainstream artist. Right. Do you think that was possible back in the day? Nah, it wasn't. Because, um, I mean, 
you would have re remained local back in the day. You could have done it like selling. There were people who sold mm -hmm. CDs out of the trunk and did, you know, shows and, you know, brought different artists around into their towns and all that. Yeah, but you wouldn't have been able to have a global appeal like you do now with the Internet. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like the Internet now afforded us the opportunity to reach people in, you know, Cincinnati, to reach people in Canada, to reach mm -hmm. people in Europe and Africa and all over the world. Like, and all you got to do is just, you know, sit in your home. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the Internet coming into the game and me being able to reach people across the world, it's like, yo, what I need a label for. You know what I'm saying? Like, Facts. if I could just... There's billions of people in the world. If I could just get 10,000 of them, you know, sell them merchandise and get them to like my stuff, man. Like, <laughs> That's all that matters. Good. Yeah, good. I'm straight, yeah. man. Like, I'm one of those dudes, like, I'm a minimalist, you know? I don't need much. To what to, degree? Uh, I don't really need much to, to But what, to, what's to not much for, you, for smooth hands, though? Like, everybody's not much is different. Okay. For me. Like, can you right? live in a tiny home? Are you small enough to live in a tiny home? <laughs> I, I can't, bro. Like, long as I got, yo, me personally, long as I have <laughs> a kitchen, <laughs> a comfy bed, a beautiful woman, a couch, television, I don't need much. That's you all know you what I'm need. saying? That's your I mean, I yeah. feel, like, I okay. feel like a tiny home was a man invention. Yeah, because got, dudes really don't no, need. You know what a tiny home? Much, do you bro. know the history of tiny homes? No, go ahead, go ahead. Nigga, tiny homes are slave court, court how slaves used to live. Mm. That's why it was controversial when it first came out. Because a lot of people was like, slaves had to go through and endure all of this without choice, and now people are choosing to live in these tiny compartments. Right. I think, but I think now it's more about like just cutting off the fat. Yeah, you facts. feel me? Like, do I need? It's just me, my girl, my kids. Like, do I need twelve bedrooms? Yes. No, I don't. You need it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel, don't. I'm, like, those, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those people that kind of feel like I need <laughs> it. But, yeah, I, I don't need it. Like, I I would like to have it, but do I need it? I mean, it's not a matter of need. It's just uh, to, all right. So for me, it's like, what can I afford? No, nah, it's not even that. that I feel like too, I went too. so much in life with accepting. Right, right, What right. was given to me. Right. You know? I feel like it's now my time to take right, right, what right. I think I deserve. Right, right, right. Not in a matter of forcefully or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's that time for me to act upon what was truly meant for me. Hey, yo, but check this out, right? That's your right. So, I believe when you do have a desire for something, you need to obtain that desire. Mm. You need to go through that. In order to realize, it like, yo, this shit ain't, hey, I don't want it. Like, yeah. I thought I wanted it, but I, now that I got it, I don't really need it. Yeah, but man. I wouldn't know all unless yeah. I did it. All these rich people talk all that shit like, oh, you don't need all this shit. But yeah. how the fuck we know that? Yeah. 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 You know what? You know, know. We know that they shit. Had to, they yeah. had access let me to learn. all of these things. Let right. me learn. I'm let stubborn. Me learn. Yeah, right. let me I'm learn. I'm stubborn. I want to learn from mistakes. Right. This is a good segue into a question I have for you. So you talk a lot of luxury and ambiance and stuff like that. So... um does luxury mean cost to you no not at all because luxury is all subjective you know what i'm saying there's things that i might see as luxury that somebody else might look at as like ah, that's not valuable to me like like a lot of people are talking about art right now right so you'll see an art piece on the wall that might be worth five million dollars but you got someone who doesn't see the value in it. Like, man, that shit is ugly. I'm not buying that. Like, Fact. You know what I'm saying? Fact. It's not valuable to them. Like so. a Basquiat. Yeah, like, oh, that's, you know what I'm saying? That shit look crazy. Like, I've looked at Basquiat paintings and I'm like, oh, damn, that's, I'm not that. intrigued by it. Like, it's not like, it ain't like, for me. I, I like this, I like this Nipsey painting better than I would like a Basquiat. Yeah, you know fact. what I'm saying? So it's just, it's all about what's valuable to you. So, Luxury and all that definitely is it's, it's all subjective, man. It's What's your subjective. definition of luxury? Um, like, give us the smooth definition of luxury from what you've experienced from living your life. Um, luxury to me is having the best, right? And again, the best is subjective. Like, you know, 
I've been ex I've been blessed to be exposed to a lot of different things, a lot of different places, a lot of different people who have been a lot of places and have done a lot of different things. So to me, it's all about having the top quality. You know, that's what luxury is to me. Right. Whatever it is, like you know. You know All right. So, saying? going into this episode, right? Um, I, I feel like your bars are slept on. Okay. I truly do that. Like mm -hmm. from from just my perspective, so somebody who's been listening to you, mm -hmm. I truly feel like your bars are slept on. Right. I tried. It's not much, but I tried to come up with some bars that I resonated to. And okay. I, I'm gonna rent. I have three written down right here, and I'm gonna okay. randomly just come out the episode. And if you can finish the bar for me, if you can right. remember, you can finish the bar for me, and we can take it from there. So I'm gonna right, go right, off right, one right. right now. Okay. So this is one is from, of course, I love to say I told you so. Okay. All right. So two bars. If you see me in a Sherling hat, I had the coat oh, to match. match. Yeah. <laughs> the persona match the braggadocious raps. I walk yeah. with my head up. Well, chest, chest out, shoulders, shoulders back. back. Confidence is something I don't, I don't lack. lack. Yeah, man. I mean, I wrote that bar. <clears throat> oh, that whole sequence was just me about having the right posture. You know what I'm saying? If you got the right posture, everything else is going to come out to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you walk with your head up, your chest out, shoulders back. You naturally feel better. So when you naturally feel better, you're naturally going to attract better Thanks, because facts. you feel better. You know what I'm saying? You don't so, got to work for yeah, it. Yeah, you don't got to work much, man. Like, And people will gravitate towards you. So, you know, if you see me in the Sherlin hat, I had this coat to match. Like, I only was able to obtain those things because I walked with my head up, my chest out, my shoulders back. What the fuck if is I didn't a Sherlin hat? What's a Sherlin hat? Yeah, what is that? The, <laughs> so, the Sherlin jacket, right? Yo, check this out, man. <laughs> For real, like, like, like back back in the day, right? You know, uh, growing up in Hartford, everybody around the town was rocking fatigues. Like, Hartford is mob deep influence, you know what I'm saying? So everybody's rocking fatigue. So myself and my baby brother, you know, we were the only ones in the neighborhood that had Sherlin coats, you know. That's the, the leather coats with the with the fur on the collar and the fur around us. So that was my mm. twist, you know what I'm saying? And we also had the, that the, uh, had the hats to match, you know what I'm saying? Ah! So it's the, the leather, the furry joint, so it was fly. Everybody looking at me like, yo, this dude got... Yeah, that's different. Like, I, I was always different, you know what I'm saying? So that's what that's about, man. That's Sherlin, man. I, I love a Sherlin, a fly Sherlin. I got one right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. Yep. So my uh, God human experience. Excuse me? Oh, God's, God's human, human experience, spirit. right. Hibachi stuff ain't like what I was saying. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, you going to you squirt sake in my girl, girl mouth. mouth? You got to pay. pay. <laughs> Yo, one thing I noticed about you, yeah. when you hit song, you started with a standard. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. like, I, when I heard that, I'm like, Man, like I feel you, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. like, nigga, this ain't free, nigga. No, this ain't you free. This is. This hey, yo, have fun. Check this out, right? I this is my this is usually my writing process, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to I just I'm not one of those dudes who just writes mechanically. I have to be inspired by something. So I'm out at the hibachi chilling, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I see this shit. <laughs> Homie walking around, moving fast. He's squirting in they paws, everybody <laughs> mouth. Hey, yo. And, like, and, and, and the way that my brain works, I'm like, you know, that looks crazy. Me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I kind of connect that to Pippin in a way. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay, baby. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just how I work. That's how I work lyrically. So that that was, that's what my mind was, man. Like, shout out to Hibachi, man. He's just doing his job. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, nah, you got to pay your head. Head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's pimping over here. You, know? <laughs> you got a tip for me, nigga, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Okay. Let me see what I got. Oh, this is a good. This is another one right here. This is my. This might go for a little bit, but um. Okay. Dirk recently is like in Chicago, is trying to get more people into religion. Mm. Right. And through your bars and stuff, like you speak, you speak of uh, like the Islamic practice and the five percenters type mm -hmm. type deals and stuff like that. So I kind of want to elaborate: is the like is the hood missing religion? Mm. Are people? And matter of fact, let me say that: are people missing religion? No, I, I like where you stand. Is the yeah. hood missing religion? I think. 
okay, what I think the hood is missing is what religion does bring in which is structure. Mm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? There's no real structure. Even on the street level, like, even in the streets right now as we speak, there's no, like, structure. Facts. Young boys are... No leadership. Yeah, no leadership. Young boys are running around doing what they want to do. Like, there's... Like, they have no rhyme or reason for why they're doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? They're so, trying to figure that shit out just like because yeah, nobody guiding like, them. And even if you look at the gangsters back in the day, like, you just couldn't go and whack somebody without permission Facts. Like, for no reason or like, reason or yeah logic. like there was structure so you just rob a house yeah you robbed the wrong person you robbed an old lady house somebody gonna come for you and say yo give them back they shit yeah it could be because there was structure mm -hmm. like I think more than religion because what religion does bring is structure into someone's life like I, uh, my man's uh, put me onto this and I, I'll never forget what he said like there was one time where he uh became woke quote unquote you know what i'm saying he woke up he woke up right so he was going around trying to tell people who might have been following a certain religion like yo that's wrong because a b c and d you know what i'm saying that he had to catch himself he's like yo if i'm going to if i see that this religion is bringing this man's peace like he changed his life he is a, a, a great civilian. He's a working man. He's taking care of his family. I'll be devilish to tell that man to stop following that religion. You're no matter agent. what it is. You're yeah. his agent. Exactly. From a matrix standpoint. Yeah, You're his agent. exactly. You're his agent. So it's like if that religion works for that man or woman, and it, so it's... So be it. So be it. He's not harming anyone. She's not harming anyone. They're not, you know being destructive to the neighborhood or so let them rock what they what they do and i i, I respect little dirk for what he's doing because you know he may be living a certain type of lifestyle but i see that he's trying to bring in some kind of structure because we all need it like whether right. it is through religion or whether we create our own you need change yeah somewhere. anything we need some some kind of code of conduct some kind of structure to live by some rules like we need to be guided by those. You know what I'm saying? It's funny that you said that, right? Because I actually had my own personal revelation of that. Okay. I realized I was the agent for a lot of fucking people. Mm. But it wasn't on a personal level. Right. That's what made it worse. Okay. It was on a social level. Okay. Unpack that for me. Because I realized I would go on social media. Yeah. And I would talk to people I have no understanding of their background mm -hmm. and tell them what's wrong based off the context of the conversation that we're having. Literally just yeah, based yeah, off yeah. the context of the conversation right, that we're right, having. Right, right. And then I realized, and then I had a friend, he was going through a lot of depressive shit, right, a right. lot of anxiety. And then one day he came to me, he's like, yo, bro, I think after today, I'm about to be Islam. Mm. I'm anti-religion. Right, right, right. So in my head, I'm here like, what the fuck are you doing? You finally... Yeah. But I stayed quiet. Mm -hmm. And I listened. Yep. And he was like, yo, my nigga's like, I've been feeling these type of ways. And it's like, I feel like this religion is going to bring me what I need. Right, right, right. And the moment he said that, and I was like, if I ever say anything objective to what you just said, right. I'm the bad guy. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. If somebody's trying to better themselves, yeah, right. you try to, if you try to oppose somebody better than themselves... You are nothing but that evil force that right, puts right, 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 right. You're scum. Yeah. And he's going to start to view, you're supposed to be his friend. Yes. So he's going to start to view you as a, the bad guy. The agent. Yeah. So it's like, yo, I'm your friend, bro. I'm, 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 I'm what supporting what you're doing. whatever you got going on because you my man. If it man, works for you, you know in a year, yeah, yeah. keep riding. Right, keep, keep doing what you got to yeah, do, yeah. my nigga. Keep fucking and following that path. I'm still here. I'm still, still here, man, my nigga. We're going to have the real talk that we're going to have either way. Right. Because at the end of the day, I realize that people we keep around us shouldn't always be in alignment of what we want out of life. No. Hey, yo, and yo, on a on deeper level, bro, I, I like to read things and I like to talk to people who challenge my core beliefs. Yes. I need opposition. Yeah. It's, that's what makes you Logical and sharp. intellectual yeah. opposition. But that's what sharpens you. Yes. So if I'm like, if I'm just talking to a whole bunch of, to, to a bunch of people who are... Like minded, like minded. They're they're we're saying the same things. Like that's cool. How do you grow? Yeah, how do you grow? Like, where do I you need grow? To, I need someone to challenge 
what I believe. It's like, nigga, you said that, but yeah. think about this. <laughs> yeah, or, okay. What what about this? Oh, I see it this yeah. way. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that helps you in the future better defend your core beliefs. Yes, because it makes you, you believe if what you're saying is true or not. Right, right, Because if right, you're right. opposed and you can defend it articulately right, right, right. In, a, in a proper manner, yep. you're going to be like, all right, I truly do believe this. Yes, or yes. if somebody bring it to you in a way you've never heard it, it might change your mind. Absolutely. Yes. You might be like, oh, shit, I never heard it that way. I never thought about it that way. Yo, and that should, I like what you just said, bro, because I think that should be our way of life. Like, that's my way of life. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, completely open-minded. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to listen to whatever it is that you have to say. No matter what walk of life you're in, I'm going to listen. I'm All right. All, all right, right, let me play devil's advocate to that. Okay. At what point are you so open-minded that you become a mental whore? That's a great question. Um, I don't think I can ever become a mental whore, right? Not you specifically, <laughs> generally yeah, but, speaking. But generally a speaking, anybody. A lot of people anybody, are mental whores because but, they take on the thoughts and ideas of other people and try to rationalize that why it's their own. The, okay, so I, I like what you just said. I believe that you have to... You have to be open minded, but you have to keep that filter up. You know the what I'm persona. saying? The persona. The persona. You have to take in, pause, whatever <laughs> works for you. And you have to pause. Yeah, <laughs> pause. And everything else, you know, can stay out there. You feel what I'm saying? So there's I don't of course I don't agree with everyone's lifestyle. But you're not supposed to. But I'm not supposed to. And if I come across someone who lives a completely different lifestyle than me. You know, that lifestyle might work for them. And I'm open to listen to why, why you live I that lifestyle. Know. I'm mm-hmm. curious. And guess what? Yeah. And guess what? After you explain to me, I'll be like, I either understand or, yo, like, that's, nah, that's some that's bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. You fucking, you know what I'm <laughs> talking about? Yeah, some dumb yeah. ass niggas but, out but, here. But, but I, at least, at the end of the day, I didn't like, I could feel good nah, that I didn't close myself off facts. to the why. Because everyone has a Why? why? So I just listen, like, okay, like, ah, bro, you wildin' or sis, you wildin'. Go ahead with that, like, you know what I'm saying? But I listened and I mm. acknowledge. I, I acknowledge it, you know what I'm saying? And that's their that's their human right. That's the truth. That's their yeah, experience. That's their experience. I think my grandmother had this saying, um, uh, or just older people are that of the saying, um, you can't know if something stink until you smell it. Absolutely. That's a great yo, I swear, bro. So you're you're uh you you are Jamaican, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So my my family is from the south. Mm-hmm. So there's similar. a lot of yeah, similar. So many similarities. The way we live is similar. So many similarities, and bro, like they say the simplest things, and it just has deep ass it's deep meanings. meaning, bro. Like it's like wow, like yo, know, my grandmother used to say, like you know what I'm saying. She used to say something like, you know, I don't kiss some some shit about kissing somebody ass. Yeah. Cause. I forgot. Damn, I forgot what she said, bro. Pardon me, but now you good. She had a she had a real uh, uh, a real simple saying. I give you one mm-hmm. for my grandmother. Okay, now, right? she always said, "You can keep thinking because it's think of shit." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamaica, with the way we say stink is yeah, tink. Tink, right, yeah. right, right, right. So right. every time he's like, "I think, I think," she's like, "Guan, guan, tink till they think of shit." Right, 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 right. Which is basically saying either be sure, yeah, or be so oblivious. To your own convictions and your own thoughts that you end up in shit. Right, right, Metaphorically right. Metaphorically right. speaking. It's mm-hmm. just simple, cut and dry. To the point. Things that will live on for years. Forever. And this was told to me when I was a, a child. Come on, man. And I'm 30 years old yeah. now. And that shit actually means more to me now. Right, right, right. It makes sense. It's, yes. it's taking root. That's the part of growing up. Like, that's why... Like double down on your on what you said is like you don't start maturing into your late twenties, mm, yo. Absolutely. I didn't develop common sense until I was like twenty five. Yo, <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little later I'm being than real. that. Yeah. I'm being real. Yo, like facts. I did not because it's ass. like, like all right, you have these intuitions when you go out, right? Yeah. But not everybody get those intuitions. You can't be in the streets and something tell you like, nah, don't go there. Right, right, right. You right. get that over time yeah. based off experience. Yo, check this out. You you had it. Back when you were younger, but you ignored it. Yes, because mm-hmm. we didn't think it meant anything. Yeah, that that <clears throat> voice, like, I can't speak for you, but for myself, I was so caught up in trying to be outside, trying to be around. Like, I would ignore that voice, like, yo, bro, you need to do A, B, and C. 
But I'm looking, let's talk it to that voice. Like, nigga, shut the fuck you up. Way, shut up. Like, go outside. Like, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm out here. Like, you crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think about that shit right now as, as far as if I would have did, like, I always had thoughts of, you know, saving my bread and investing in certain things. Mm-hmm. And these certain things actually happened to work out, but I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Right, right. And was I always meant think to? about... Like, yeah, was I mean, it meant... I. I get that, but I'm like, nigga, if you if you would have if you would have invested in Apple when you had the bread and you yeah. started working at a young age, then yeah. you would have had. But look how many people who get Apple. it at a young age but lose it. Right, right. You know, it's all about it's all about yeah. your, like your circumstances in life. I feel like Ooh, that's a good everything question. that's meant for you come at the appropriate time. Yeah. All right, so if, like my personal experience, right? Mm-hmm. I got in a car accident a little bit over a year ago. Okay, I'm waiting on my check. Right, right, right. <laughs> But do you know I'm not stressing it? I don't need whatever money is going to come from that now. Right, right, right. Even if I think I do, right. I don't. I can honestly make something happen. Yeah, you are even right. if it you, comes down to it, right? Even yeah. if you do need it, you live it without it. Exactly. Right, right, right. But it's going to come at a time where I couldn't even imagine of when I would need it. Right, right, right. You know? It's kind of like that rainy day everybody say you got to prepare for, but you have to be logical. I think me getting older, I realize it's like... Yo, a lot of things that you think you need right now goes like you're saying. You're like, you don't need you it. You don't need it, bro. You Yo, don't. check this out, bro. On a deeper level, right? I, I And I told my girl this. Like, most of the chicks that I knocked off back in the day, I didn't even do it because I really I just had to nut. It. Deeper than that, bro. Pause. I needed the validation from them. Mm. You feel what Internally. I'm saying? Like this, 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 this chick beautiful. She fly. She want me. Word. You know what I'm saying? I got it. I, I got, got it. it. Yeah, that reminds me of one of your bars too. I got too. it. Hit it. You when feel you were talking me? about when you're old, because your oldest sister, she used to bring her friends around, and you used to yeah. pee with the bathroom door yeah, open just I needed to see the that you validation. It. <laughs> it was deeper than the. It was deeper than. Of course, I like how it feel. But I like that this fly ass chick want me. Like, she said yes to she me. She said yes to me. Like she could have chose anybody, all these anybody other dudes, else. But, but she chose me. Nigga. I'm that nigga. Like, and then once you get older, you start to understand. Like you don't need that validation. You know what I'm saying? It actually lessened. Yeah, your I value as unless, a person. Yeah, because sometimes the people you say yes to mm-hmm. depreciate your value. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Say that again, bro. On some real shit. And that's why you have to learn to figure out what's for you right. and what's not. Right, 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 right. Saying no is going to get you the yeses you want. Absolutely. Everybody ain't for you, bro. Nah, I'm some real thanks. shit. Everybody ain't for you. Like, a lot of the... I should have said no to the, a lot of the people that I We should have, but we're teenagers. Yeah. I fucked a girl raw with four condoms in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's some teenager shit. That's some teenage shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, that's some teenage shit. In my shit. head, I'm like, if I go get the condoms now, she's going to say no. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which is a dumb thought. Right, right, right. But it's like in your head, it's logical. Man. But on the, yo, bro. Oh, man. We got to keep it a buck, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. We got to. Like, especially. That at- shit. Th- this is why I don't really care too much about uh, chicks who who has had, like, surgical procedures and all that. Me neither. Because I've not, uh, I've not females off who have all of that, right? Check this out, bro. I always feel like there's some kind of blockage between us like i'm sure. not really connected to it yeah. like because i feel like the silicone and shit is in the way you know what i'm saying yeah artificial yeah similar to like it's a condom the yeah similar to the condom the condom is taking right, away that man in the pum pum yeah that's why i personally like having a, a, a girl you know what i'm saying i don't, <laughs> I don't want to be dealing with all that shit i don't even want the anxiety that you know i don't know if this chick been doing a b and c and d like Facts. you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying at least I, I believe my girl was not doing anything. You got that so security. I got that security, so I ain't doing nothing, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing that. So all of that stuff kind of like, I think that was more, I think when we were kids, we were living more in our animal state. Yes. Yeah. It was more natural. Like, I'm not putting this shit Certain on. Certain parts shit of our brain wasn't good. even unlocked yet. It don't feel good. You know what I'm saying? Right. But even then, we still had that. That conscious thought in our head is like, nigga, you what you're doing ain't right. Right, right. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, you know what you're doing, doing ain't right. Doing. But that's what 
that's what this society put out there for us. They put out the the diseases and the, you know, they have us afraid to make children and Facts. all of that stuff. Like they bring us condoms. Yeah, they they put all of this stuff out there to the the to and, and rightfully so. Like I get in some situations it makes sense. It makes sense, right? <laughs> but not in all. Right. In right. most situations, it actually don't. Right. 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 Like right, niggas right. don't know this, right? The first birth control clinic. Mm-hmm. was in Harlem, New York. Okay. 1929. Okay. Mm-hmm. What else was happening in 1921 if everybody knows their history? The Great Depression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's population so now, control. Population. So now, Harlem is overrun by black people and white people that don't give a fuck. Because mm-hmm. if white people don't have a certain amount of money, you're black in the eyes of white standards. Right, right. So, they put, in the overrun state, they put a black abortion, they put a bo- abortion clinic. Right, right. Now, Harlem was in their Renaissance era at that time, too. Okay. They were making music. Okay. Art was big. But most importantly, they were fucking. Yeah. That's they were a, fucking. Yo, yeah, bro. <laughs> That's every No era. condoms. <laughs> That's never going to stop. It does it. <laughs> exactly. But because we're in the Great Depression, they can't afford a fucking baby right now. Nah. You going to stop fucking? No, you're not. You're not, you're not. So you're gonna stop yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you gonna do? You gonna go down to this fucking birth control clinic? Right, right. And a lot of people don't know this. The birth control clinic was developed by Margaret Sanger. Yep, Margaret Sanger. I heard about that. Her yep. first eugenics be- before mm-hmm. Planned eugenics. Parenthood was Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but it's close. They were the Abortion and Birth Control League. Mm. That was their name. Mm. They're they're part of eugenesis, mm-hmm. which their whole philosophy is, on a general term, it's deeper than that. But on a general term, is in order to have a newborn, right. you have to get rid of somebody who's already living in order to keep population balance. Mm. That's their ultimate agenda. Mm. So that's what they're all about: population control. Right, 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 right. So Margaret Sanger, she actually even had KKK grandmasters mm. to sanction and actually financially help her abortion clinic become a reality mm. by grandmasters mm-hmm. of the KKK. She went to these people and pitched this to them and right, they right. said yes. A lot of people don't know this. Right, right, right. Because history writes it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. that's heavy, bro. That's they write it out. Honestly, there's a point when you went on the Planned Parenthood website, mm-hmm. their timeline, if you know, if you're smart and you know certain things, it tells you right there but if you don't know, you don't know. Right, right. You don't. Yeah, this is uh, man. I, I, what's that saying? The uh, <laughs> the truth is stranger than falsehood. Yes. Yeah. So Niggas want to be lied to. Yeah, people want to be lied to, bro. J C Penny proved that to us. Okay, how did they? I was yes. gonna say how they do that. Yeah. <laughs> J C Penny was the first company to ever come out with the everyday value. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. Where it's never on sale. We're going to give you the lowest price that we can always give you always. It's the everyday lowest value. Mm. J.C. Penny is one of the first companies to ever do this. Mm-hmm. When they first established this, did you know they actually lost business? Okay. Niggas didn't want the everyday value. They wanted to feel like they were saving money. Right, right. <laughs> That's all a sale if is. It's the same, if it's the same price every day. Yes. Um, not I'm not yeah, saving not special, money. Yeah. But if it's this price one day and right. you're telling me I can get a 10% off just this day only. Right, right, right. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Yeah, yeah. Just but in I reality, just... on the flip side, that company lost no money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a sale. JC Penny literally proved to us that we as consumers want to be lied to right 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 it makes us feel better in our spending habits mm-hmm. yeah i agree with that that's that's heavy